Hi, I'm Tom Scarpello of Revology Cars, and this is car number 112, a 1967 Mustang GTA 2 Plus 2 Fastback in lava orange with Cognac Napa leather and tweed houndstooth interior. Today I'm going to take you on a walk around of this car and we're going to go for a drive. Let's get started. Okay, so this is our first Super Cobra Jet. So what is a Super Cobra Jet? Well, at Revology Cars, this is the basically our Revology GT500 powertrain uh, transplanted into the 67 or 68 Mustang GT body style. Uh, it features the same 710 horsepower supercharged 5 liter TIVCT engine. Super Cobra Jet um, was inspired by the original 1968 Cobra Jet, which was at the time the most powerful Mustang ever built with the largest displacement engine that was ever put into a Mustang, the 428. And that was the Cobra Jet. That car set a record at the Dearborn Proving Ground with a 13.4 second quarter mile time. Um, one update that we've made recently to our supercharged engine package is this uh, polished intake. Uh, we used to have a painted intake. So the client who spec'd out this car is a, a long-standing Revology client. This is his fourth Revology Mustang. I would have to say the word for it is audacious. So audacious is defined as something done with extreme confidence despite risk, difficulties, or the negative attitudes of other people. He's really spent a lot of time specking the car out and it's very unique, it's very different, maybe polarizing, but you know, you don't build a Revology Mustang to impress other people. You build it for yourself and that's exactly what he did. Now, the color is lava orange. This is a Porsche color. It's one of Porsche's special colors. At the front of the GTA, fog lamps, the horse and corral grill with the horizontal bars. The Super Cobra Jet has a fiberglass hood. That's to allow clearance for the supercharger. Uh, at the side, uh, the client chose the VN427 Cobra wheel with a painted insert which matches the interior. So really a carefully thought out theme. The GTA has the side stripe and the lower rocker molding. Uh, 67 has this quarter uh, panel treatment which distinguishes it from the 68. At the back of the car, you've got the um, uh, Mustang lettering across the deck lid, the GT uh, fuel cap. Uh, for the supercharged engines, we use the, the Borla uh, tips. Okay, so the interior of this car is really unique and special. Um, this leather is a Porsche Napa leather. It's cognac. The dash and steering wheel are covered in a Mercedes leather, a mocha brown. The carpet is a square weave wool. The seat inserts and the door inserts are a, a fabric. It's a tweed houndstooth fabric, and it's got some orange in it, um, which integrates with the, um, the exterior, obviously, and then also orange stitching. Our new our new console, which is a uh, 3D printed design, which gives us a really precise uh, fit of the console. It's got kind of a 70s theme to it, I'd say. It's really cool. It looks like something I, I might have seen when I was growing up. So we're driving the Revology 1967. Mustang GTA 2 Plus 2 Fastback Super Cobra Jet. Why is it super? It is super because it's supercharged. Cobra Jet was the hottest engine available in the Mustang lineup in 1968, but it wasn't supercharged. This car is going to one of our favorite clients. This is his fourth Revology Mustang. He has a fifth in the production queue. Uh, he is a lifelong automobile enthusiast. He's owned all kinds of different cars, classic cars, new cars, sports, special, just all kinds of specialty vehicles. Very knowledgeable guy. Um, pleasure to work with. That kind of loyalty is so valuable and it says more than anything I could ever say. You know, 
when I was an analyst at Ford years ago, I used to, um, I had access to this database of customer information. But part of my job when I worked in the market research department was to, um, you know, pull reports on things. You know, someone would want to know. And one of the things I looked at was um, customer satisfaction because customer satisfaction is directly correlated to owner loyalty. And, um, you know, there was at the time, this was the early 90s, Ford was really promoting heavily uh, two year leasing, a 24 month lease term. And, you know, the reason for this was that they had studied the, the data on customer satisfaction and they had noted, you know, the a decline over time. Customer satisfaction would be high the first year of ownership, second year of ownership, third year of ownership it would decline a lot and really start to go down. So the logic was, and these are obviously a bunch of, you know, bright MBAs uh, that came up with this, is, oh hey, well if we can just get the people out of the car at the end of the second year, they'll never get into the third year where the satisfaction starts to drop and they're probability of repurchasing or releasing will be higher. That was the whole premise for two-year leasing. I, I went in and looked at all the data, all the brands. You know, all the brands tended to decline over time except one. That brand was Honda. Honda satisfaction was high in the first year, dropped a little bit in the second year, dropped a little bit in the third year, but in the fourth year it ticked up not just a little but like statistically significant increase in satisfaction in the fourth year so what was going on with honda well it was just the the experience that people were having with their honda was better than what they expected the car in the fourth year was reliable uh it was you know low not costly to maintain you know it it, it still felt good it felt new you know the the lesson learned from Honda is you just design a, a really good car and you stand behind it and just work hard and do the right thing and we do make mistakes but when we make mistakes we learn from them we, we determine what happened why did that go wrong and how can we make sure that that never happens again and we get better and I think people appreciate that our customers appreciate that they see that and that's why our owner loyalty is so high